Good morning, everybody. How are you? Welcome to my Shabby Craft Studio. I am Martha, and I am here today with the... <laughs> and I'm a little late getting it out. Sunday Snippets! Yay! So today is a little different. We are going to actually make snippets. And we are going to review what we are going to do. <laughs> I'm a poet and didn't know it on Make It Monday. So one of the things that I've been playing with for Make It Monday is this. And that's just a sneak preview. So first we're going to play with these um, little snippets that I made. I had a viewer and I am not prepared this morning. I had about four hours of sleep last night. So bear with me because today is probably going to be like trip and fall and stumble and mess up. So um, let me find the right page. So Janice Walters, this is for you. You requested that I show how to, well, you asked me if I had a tutorial on how to make the fabric snippets. And I don't have a tutorial, but you're about to get one. Yay! Okay, so let me just flip through these really quickly to show you what I made. And I did all of these sitting in front of TV and just using, now this one's teeny weeny. Okay, this one's about two inches long. And I just used various fabric scraps. I hope you can see these. I am looking in my in my camera to see if you can see these well. Oops, put it where they can see it, Martha. Okay. So I just have tons of these. Like this is fabric. This is lace. This is um, tea dyed flower sack fabric and this is quilting cotton so and a button and it's all just held together with a button i mean i just used my buttons for holding it together now this one i just sewed this on and all you have to do is thread a needle put a knot in the thread and put a couple of stitches in that's all you need to do and if you don't sew this is a fantastic way to just start sewing there are, i mean youtube come on tons of sewing you know on YouTube now this I used some burlap and I used a piece off of a um... <sighs> I received some doilies as gifts from a friend in our spin group and um, then some crocheted trim and some quilting fabric and again, a little cloth flower that already had the little pearl inside. Um, this is one of those fabric, not fabric, uh, paper flowers you can get like in Michael's, um, maybe Joann's. They come in packets. Pretty sure I got those in Michael's. Um, and then just, just tons more. I mean, they're all similar but different. Um, so I just had time in front of the TV and that's all it is and this is a great project for just mixing it up practicing a few stitches and then you have all these fun things that you want to do and here's some pink ones so I just used fabric and put them together these do not have paper mixed in um, this this pink and the pink here. Another person in our spin group gave me, um, and I say spin and I don't mean the bicycle kind, um, <laughs> cause I don't do that. Um, that came from pillow case and sheet samples. And she had like boxes full of these things. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna use those because they're a weir real weird size. And so, and here again, I used it again from a pillowcase sample. So aren't those cute? And like, this could be a mini fabric flip inside of a journal. 
right? This one. And then I made a big one, which actually could be a mini flip. Like this would be great in a traveler's notebook size journal or just a regular journal, or you could cover an envelope with it. I mean, just anything. I just haven't used it yet. So that's my little baggie full of snippets. And I think I need to get back to doing more because it's very zen to do them. You just pick pieces of fabric out. And I'm going to insert a picture here. That I took of my cart. I have one of those three-tiered rolling carts. I got most of mine from Ikea. A couple came from Michael's. And I just have it full of all my fabric scraps. So I have this little needle book that I made. It was my first needle book. And I just sort of threw it together. And um, again, this is something that Rachel recommended. It's a needle threader and it works great. Um, but I've bent mine up already. And then these are just some, some of the pages that are in it. And some I haven't filled it yet. I just haven't gotten around to it. But I need to put some pins and stuff like that in it. And it's got quilt batting in between in the cover. And this is just a muslin cover that I covered in other fabrics. And there's one of my first little fabric snippets I made. And then these are roses that you get at Hobby Lobby. And, or you used to. I don't think they carry them anymore. I have this bin with embroidery threads in it. And all, just all kinds of stuff. I have buttons. And I have... Um, some wild, very cool fabric, and um, yeah, so this is that threader that Rachel recommends, and I got that on Amazon, although I think Joann's online carries them, but I don't order stuff from Joann online because, um, and I have sewing thread. This is what's left when I'm sewing ephemera folios. I use these huge spools, and when there's only this much left, I take it off and I use it for sewing this stuff. Or you can use embroidery floss to sew those on. So as you can see, I have all kinds of bits and pieces in here of, you know, just fabrics. So let's pull this out because that'll sort of match what I'm doing. Oh, look, another piece of my favorite pink. And we'll pull that. Out. Oops. My hands are so dry. Um... I had to wash them a lot yesterday. I'm going to use that thread. I'm going to use this. <laughs> I'm trying to stay with like the golds. See, see this little teeny tiny piece? I will use that in this project. And I think I'm going to use some of this. And let's see, what else do I have? <laughs> I'm going to take some of that. And I just sit with this box near me on uh, the couch. Uh, I actually have a love seat because my dogs, well, my one dog, Evan, he insists on sitting next to me. These are all neutrals. Now, see, I cut circles out of these to make yo-yos for the, um, uh, so for the soul. And I kept the pieces because I figure, well, I'll use them again. I can use the little snippets in my little snippets, my little bits and bobs. And then maybe we'll throw that in there. I'm looking for fall colors in case you couldn't figure that out. <laughs> and then, and these are fabric strips that I buy at Joann's when they're on sale. They come in a roll. I don't think I have one right now, but, um, oh, look, yo-yos, little yo-yos. I'm not going to use those in the snippets, so okay. So let's see. I think, and I have brown buttons already open somewhere. I'll take that out. Hopefully, I will get this done before. Um, <laughs> I just need to get my stuff and get it together here. Okay, let's see. I have a package of brown buttons open somewhere, people. I know I do. This is my other oops, don't fall over please it is dark here today it is dreary it is uh crazy we had a crazy crazy night last night i have some beads can you use beads on that now some of this stuff is out because i have it out for the 
you know, slow stitching stuff, but it all crosses over. You, I mean, you can't go wrong, you know, right? You, you just, you, everything crosses over. Well, this would be pretty too. <laughs> Where are my brown buttons that are already open? Erg, I did not plan very well prior to this, obviously. Um, because I can't find my brown buttons. There's a bunch of gold and neutral fabric in here. Oh my goodness gracious me. I'm even going to take this out. All right, so I have all these things. You just gather, look, like if you want to go with a color scheme, I'm going with neutral and gold for fall. Um, so just, you know, just look for stuff around your house. That's all you need to do. So I'm just going to cut that, rip it. I'm going to cut these ends off because I don't want them zigzagged, which is how they come. And I don't care if it's straight. I just want rustic. That's my look. Rustic and shabby. Hence the Shabby Craft Studio. All right. Okay. So we're just going to take that. Oh, excuse my sniffling because of the sneezing I just did. And then, uh, nope. Let's see. I like this. So, so I hope this finds everybody okay. Um, the storms that just blew through last night and, you know, Today, our rain is coming from the remnants of Laura. And if any of you are down south and you had to go through that, I feel for you. All we got was rain today, um, but not pleasant. You, you all down there really had a rough go of it. And I feel for you. I really, really do. Um, we are getting the rain from that today. But... Um, it's nothing like what you went through. Nothing at all like what you went through. My, now my nose itches. Humidity. Humidity does this to me. I I swear to you. I don't know if there is such a thing. So I'm going for a really tiny button here. Well, tiny. Tiny is relative. Come back here, Lace. Okay. And what I did was I just lined it up in a row. Now... You can put it on the side. You you can center it. It's best not to be too OCD about this. <laughs> you can be. I mean, if you have, you know, control issues and you want this to be perfect, I think I'm going to flip that this way. I'm trying for right side up. But I think I want this pretty part at the bottom. I have no idea what way that goes. Nope. That's the front. I'm pretty sure because it's brighter and whoop. Okay. So I'm just going to sew that together. Could I have done more? Sure. You could do more. You can make them as thick as you want. Or would I like that? No. I like the button. Or would I like one of these? If I could find the end. Oh, yes. I like that better. I'm just going to cut that off. I'm leaving the little netting on it. You could cut the netting off, but it adds to the... I hope you y'all can see. I'm going to zoom in just, just a teensy bit more. Move you over here so maybe you can see better. So there we go. That's what I'm doing. I am going to... I took some floss out here. Where is it? I'm going to use this gold floss because it's just pretty. Is that wanna? All right. Am I gonna be able to thread it through this needle? Nope. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> ah, looking at it again. Nope. All right. I know what needle I need to use. It's actually in my. I had it in here, and in order to keep it safe, I think that'll go through the buttonholes. That's the other thing. If you're looking for needles, just get general sewing needles because it, uh, the needle would have to go through the hole of the button or whatever. You, like, I couldn't use this for most of the beads I have because now what I do with my thread? <gasps> <laughs> no, there it is. 
Most of the beads I have are sixes or eights, and they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Now, you could put all these together all at once and sew them all at once. It's okay. Now, there's two ways to make a knot. All right. You can just wrap it around your finger and pull. Or you can do the quilter's knot, which I'll show you another time. Uh, next time I have to knot it. Now, I'm going to go right up through the middle of that flower and back down. And you probably won't even see this thread. But if you do, it's going to look like the flower has a gold center. And nothing has to be perfect. You know, it's shabby. It's junky. It's it's recycled materials. It's whatever you want it to be. Now, if I wanted to go around and I wanted to sew different, you know, different, if I wanted to stitch around here, I could. Um, it's a really easy way to learn to start stitching. But I'm just going to tie this off now. So I'm just going to go through here, go through some of the fabric in the back. This needle is not the best for this. Make a knot. I'm going to cut it off because you're going to glue it down anyway, right? It's not going anywhere. If you make a knot in the back to start and make a knot in the back to end, it's not going anywhere. And there you have it. I mean, if I hadn't had to look for my needle and my thread and everything else, that would have taken me two minutes to make, if that. So honestly, they're easy. You just have to let go of too much control. You have to let go of, um, you know, overthinking it. You have to let go of, and if your fabric won't rip, tear it and then pull the threads out. And, you know, you got threads going back and forth this way, threads going up and down that way. That's how they weave fabric. I've woven fabric myself. Okay, so I'm going to... The, not my best scissors <laughs> but I don't take my best scissors to the couch because eh, as you know I lose things <laughs> yes I do I lose things I lost my little bone folder yesterday I looked for it for like half an hour said that's okay it's here somewhere it couldn't have gone far and um, looked for it again today, and there it was, in the bottom of a bin. Hmm, don't like that. Okay, that piece is going to save for another time. And I think... I like that. And then I'm going to rip it down the middle. Okay. And I'm okay with the, the pinked edge on that side. And put that there, put that there. Threads everywhere. That's the one thing. You're going to get messy. You might want to put an apron on. You might want to, um, you know, <laughs> if you don't like a mess. Okay, and then I have this yarn. It's like, a, it's not eyelash yarn. It's like a ribbon yarn kind of thing. Love it. Used to get it at Tuesday morning. Our Tuesday morning closed. I'm very angry at them for that. <laughs> I'm angry at them. <sighs> but. So there you go. Now, here's another way you could do it. Don't notch your thread, right? And I only have this much thread left, so I'm okay with that. Um. What I'm going to do is I'm placing, actually, what I'm going to do first, <laughs> I'm going to go down on one side of that. I hope you can see. I'm going to leave, oh, Martha, I'm going to leave. <sighs> do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to go down one side and leave a long tail. Of this yarn here okay I'm gonna come up the other side and I'm gonna go I want that tail longer I'm gonna go down this side again to kind of kind of wrap the thread around the the uh, yarn because I'm sort of securing it 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through one hole of the button and I'm going to go down and I'm going to come up the bottom hole, maybe, <laughs> no, that's the top hole, <laughs> come up the bottom hole, all right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-thread this end of the yarn, hopefully, And yes, I could have done this another way. Oh, I should have brought my reading glasses over. Hello. Come on. Oop, oop. Oh, no. Oof. Yeah, so it's dark and rainy here. We had, now this was not part of Laura. We had storms come from the west yesterday. Now, I'm in Virginia in the USA, which... If you're not familiar with the USA, is on the, the right-hand side of the United States. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, bear with me, peeps. So, I am on the right hand. I could have done this an easier way, I'll bet you. I'll bet you you're telling me I could have done this an easier way. Right? And we had storms come from the west, which is... We get storms from the west and we get storms from the north, but mostly we get storms from the west and south. <sighs> Been a few weeks since I used this. <laughs> All right, I hope you can see what I'm doing because I can't do this in the air. So I put the needle over that little hook, then you wrap the thread around the little hook and then you pull your needle up and it threads your needle. Yay! And then I'm going to come back up through this hole with that thread. And then I'm just going to tie it. I'm just going to tie this in a knot because I am tired. I don't have the patience today to try and do a bow. <laughs> so I'm just going to tie it in a knot and I'm going to let the threads hang. There. Now if you wet them, they'll straighten out from being wrapped around the bobbin. That's the only thing about wrapping thread around a bobbin. It comes out kinked. So there it is. I've got thread, I've got a button, I've got yarn. You like that? Okay. Where am I? 27 minutes. So I've got two made. Um, and if I wasn't struggling, let's see if I can do this needle maybe. I'm gonna put this needle back in here. Okay, and so last night it thundered, it lightninged, this came off, and what, uh, oh my goodness, it was loud, it was stormy, it was crazy, <laughs> it was crazy. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of this fabric here, and I'm just going to tear it. So whatever you've got laying around, whatever what whatever color scheme you want to go with, whatever you want to make it, just go for it. It's not it's not rocket science, trust me. <laughs> because if it were, I wouldn't be doing it. And you just got to play. Just just play. It's just fun to play. Okay. So I'm going to use, this is some cotton linen blend thread, and it's lovely, and I used to weave with this too, and I'm not weaving a whole lot right now, so I went downstairs and I raided my stash, that's not going to work, I went downstairs, raided my stash, and I found this, and I was like, ooh, neutral, I didn't have a lot of neutrals. And so I was pretty happy to find it. Okay. I'll tell you, this little tool, better than those little wire ones. Those little wire ones, I always break them. You know what? That's not going to work. That is not going to work. I'm going to use... Maybe. <laughs> oh, you guys love me, right? <laughs> 
Eh, bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to use regular sewing thread. I tell you, I, I didn't want to get out of bed today. It, like I said, it's dark and rainy. And um, at least that one I can thread. And I, I will double this because this thread is pretty fine. And I want to make sure this does hold together. So oftentimes I will just double it. So again, just a simple, okay. Ah, had a hair on my bottom lip. And not because I want to have a mustache or a beard. Thank you very much. So again, I'm just going to go up through the back. Maybe. What the heck? I'm running into resistance. And then I just do a really fine stitch. And every time I see Rachel at Roxy Creations pull her slow stitch stuff out, or she's embroidering, or she's stitching, I just get so inspired by her. I just love Rachel. I love you, Rachel. I know you're too busy to listen to me, but <laughs> I do love you. And so many others. All right. So I've been watching Gail's videos on a faux front envelope. So we're going to make one of those probably this week too. So when I get this done, I'm going to go through the... Ow! Try not to do that. It hurts. There. Now you can't even see those stitches. I mean, really. You can't see those stitches. Use a neutral thread. If you're using blue fabric, try and find a blue thread. If you're using, you know, red fabric, try and use a red fabric. I mean, thread. If you can't find thread to match or you don't want to go out and buy a bunch of thread, buy a gray thread. Just a light gray. I don't think I have any over here. Uh, I'm going to put this in my book so I don't lose it because I will lose it. Um I'm just going to leave that thread on. I'm going to hook this through here. Just a light gray thread, kind of the color of this thing. And that will almost always blend in with whatever you're going to sew. So there's three that I did in what, five minutes or so, if I hadn't had to go look for stuff, right? Okay. So that's enough of that because that's taking up time. So I hope that this helps you figure out how to make the snippets. Now I have to cram all this stuff back, back in my cart because um, we're going to move on to the next, next little Sunday snippets bit here. And then watch, I won't be able to find any of this stuff later. Okay. Bear with me. As Gail would say, talk amongst yourselves and I'll be right with you. I mean, I'm here, but there was no easy way to do both of these projects, you know, at the same time. All righty. Put that over there. And this goes in there, too. And these go in there, too. And then I'm going to move this cart out of my way, hopefully without tipping it over and running over the dog tail. Okay. And if you have a cat, just be really careful when you're using needles and stuff. Okay. Woo wee! Let's turn this around a little bit. I just had to switch my carts out. Oop, I need to put this and this over there too. That one on the table. Alrighty, so I'm going to pick this up. And you might see the light change actually when I go to a gray background. Okay, now I'm going to zoom you out just a little. Okay. I need a drink. Tea, unsweet, warm. And I'm sorry to all my British friends and Australian friends who know how to really drink tea the right way because I, um, I have been admonished many, many times 
but I cannot eat or drink anything too hot. Um, I can't eat hot food, hot, hot, steaming, boiling, hot food. Can't eat it that way. Soup, can't eat hot. It, it just, it hurts. It hurts my mouth and it hurts my tummy. <laughs> All right. So who did I see do this? Um, Gail did one and then she got it from G. Kerr, I believe. And I think Rachel did this also, if I remember correctly, Rachel might have done this in her 2020 100 day challenge, I think. So I had a blast with this. And what you're going to need to make this is whatever size copy paper you have. Tea or coffee stained is good. Um, and any papers or napkins, if you want to decoupage napkins on, you can do that. If you want to cover it in paper, you can do that. You can use scrapbook paper, you can use digital papers, you can use, um, um, I wouldn't use double-sided paper necessarily, although you can, but I wouldn't because again, it's gonna make it bulkier and heavy. Now this could go in a journal. It's a little bit bulky, but that's because of what I put in it. You don't have to put in it what I put in it and we will look at this, but basically it starts with a piece of paper and then whatever you wanna use to design that paper with. Um, so it is a another flippy outy thingy. <laughs> I seem to be hooked on flippy outy thingies at the point. Okay, so this is one sheet of paper. Not, not, not these, but this whole thing is one sheet of paper. Now, this, I don't know that I would decorate. If you were going to put this in a journal, uh, let me get a folded piece of paper here. I'm sure I have one here somewhere. <sighs> Preparation, nine tenths. If you had a journal page, yeah, and you wanted to put this on it, wouldn't that be pretty? And if you just glued the, the three sides, the bottom and the three sides, or even if you just glued the two sides, it could be a belly band for something else, like a big tag, right? Or you glue the three sides and you put it in your journal then when somebody opens it, it opens like that. Now, if you wanted to send this as a gift, happy mail to someone, by all means, decorate the back, okay? Which I started, but I, I didn't finish. The other thing with this is you might see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, I think it is, a bit of a gloss on it. Because I decoupaged the napkins on there, I did use my Distress Collage Medium from Ranger, okay? This stuff is so nice. It takes very little to, I mean, I barely used any. It's very thick, but it's smooth, and it is a matte finish, but there is some shine to it. I mean... I don't know if you can use anything that's going to hold something down and not have some shine to it. Now, my other gel matte medium might be less shiny, and I may try that on the next one if I do napkins. But the napkins make it so it's not at all bulky. So this is literally one piece of paper. And I will show you on Monday, which is tomorrow, because this is Sunday snippets, although I'm filming on Saturday. <laughs> There you go. There's a puzzle for you. Um, this is all one piece of paper, and I'll show you how to tear it. And then these are just simple journaling cards that are going in here, right? Because this is a tuck spot. This is a pocket. I could have put a pocket here. I could have even put a pocket on this one, um, although it would be really tiny. Or this one could have become a pocket, and you could have put something in there. But, you know, I wanted the flippy thing. And then there's this tag. And then there's this little uh, 
notebook paper bit thing in here. So there you go. I used up some more paper scraps, which all can be written on. So that just tucks into this pocket here. I did no sewing except for this here. And that didn't have to be sewn. It could have been glued. It could have been hand sewn. Could have just put a couple of um, eyelets in there and done that. My sewing machine did not like this because that's quite thick. So we are going to make that tomorrow. Um, and possibly we will make a faux front envelope from Gail. It depends on how quickly I can get this done in the Make It Monday. But we may just do some bases. So you have the bases of the flip outs. And then when you make a journal, you can just pull out a base and decorate it to match your journal, right? So we may just make a few bases of this. And if we get to the faux front envelope, you need an envelope. And the only thing you have to be careful of is that, see this one's too big for a journal. It, it's a little oversized. And that dawned on me this morning that you have to have an envelope that's gonna fit in your journal unless you decide to make this a Happy Mail or a gift as well. Um, so this envelope would be perfect for this. And this is a new envelope, but um, it's from a set that I got on sale. Hobby Lobby, when their paper studio is on sale, you can get envelopes there. This is just a stationary envelope, okay? Um, and so you want it fairly large. And Gail makes hers in this orientation. I'm going to try and make one in this orientation. So Gail has at least four or five videos. You can look up Gail Augustinelli, faux, F-A-U-X, front envelope or Rachel made one in her 100 day challenge this year in 2020 so you could look up Roxy Creations go to her YouTube look up Roxy look up um Roxy Creations faux front envelope or Roxy Creations 100 day challenge day 86 I think it was I will try to link all of those videos below you can check them out if you want to, or you can wait for me to pull my stuff together and do this um, tomorrow. So the other thing you'll need is some pretty double-sided paper. Double-sided is the best. Um, if you don't have double-sided, you can work that out. You could use tea stained. You could use cream colored cardstock. You could use a lot of things. So um, these are just some Tim Holtz pages I have left from um, the pads that I make the ephemera folios out of. And so you, you know, you could use that. You could use this paper pad from Prima. Hobby Lobby usually has these in their department. When they put their paper studio stuff on sale, this is not on sale. But if you go to Hobby Lobby when they're doing, when they have card stock on sale, this should be included in it. I have gotten this every time, not every time. I've bought one of these pads several times, the Prima pads, during their card stock sale because this is card stock. So, um, many ways to do this. I'm sorry, I hope that didn't shake the camera too much. Um, many ways to do it, but you need an envelope that will fit in whatever size journal you're going to make, or you can just use a giant envelope that you got for your birthday or anniversary or Christmas or whatever. And, um, this was a birthday card and my family now knows not to write anything on the front. <laughs> not that I can't cover it up. But that's where this came from. So this is a recycled envelope. As much as it looks brand new, it's not. And so um, if you want to use one this big, you can. It just won't fit in your journal. So be aware of that. So those are the two things that I'm planning on trying to make um, tomorrow on camera. If I can't get this one done, we'll do one of them. I mean, if I can't get them both done, we'll do the other one on What's Up Wednesday uh, following make it Monday. <laughs>
<laughs> so I thank you very much for joining me. I hope you had fun making snippets. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Look for the links below for these two projects coming up if you want to preview and see what Rachel and Gail did. I will link some of those below. And uh, check out my Etsy shop, please. Give me a thumbs up, please. It means a lot to me. Um, ring the bell so that you get notified when I come out with new videos. And leave comments because it means a lot to me. And if you have any questions, if you have any um, ideas, suggestions, let me know. Take care. Stay safe. Be well. Love you all. Hugs to everybody. Bye. Happy crafting.